Alright, I want to welcome everybody back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. And this is going to be part one in our new series of lessons covering ECG or EKG rhythm interpretation. And in this lesson, we're going to cover the conduction system of the heart. All right, welcome back everybody. Like I said, this is gonna be the first lesson in a new series of lessons that we're doing covering ECG or EKG rhythm interpretation. And so for those of you that this is your first time to the channel and you wanna see more in-depth critical care education content such as this, please do subscribe below. And make sure and hit that notification bell to ensure that you're alerted as soon as new lessons become available. Your support really does mean a lot, and it helps to support the channel and the videos such as this one. And so for that, I really do thank you. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Watson, and I'm going to be presenting this lesson for you. All right, so let's go ahead and dive on in. And so like I said, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the conduction system of the heart. And in order to really be able to understand what's going on with your patient in terms of what you're seeing on their ECG rhythm strip, it helps to really have a good foundation in understanding the conduction system that really makes that all possible. And so we have a diagram of the heart here, and I'm really going to use this to show you where this conduction system is, explain about it, and help you to have a good understanding of what's going on in the heart with this system. And so I'm going to go ahead and label some parts on here so that we make sure we're looking at this in the same way. And so the first thing I'm going to label is our right atrium, our right ventricle, our left atrium, and our left ventricle. Now, as we know, these are the four major chambers of the heart, and the blood flows through these chambers out to various parts of the body. In addition to that, the blood flow also will flow through our tricuspid valve, our mitral valve, our pulmonic valve, and our aortic valve. Now, I'm not going to spend much time here and really talk about the flow of blood through this system. In fact, we have a really great lesson that actually goes through all of this in detail within our hemodynamics series, which I'm going to go ahead and link to up above. But it does help to have a good understanding of that blood flow as well, because ultimately the conduction system, the whole point of that is to ensure that that blood flows through the system. Now, one last thing I do want to get into before we really get into the meat and potatoes of what we're going to talk about here is I do want to cover some basic terminology that's going to be important. And for this, we're really just going to be talking about two things. The first of these is what we call depolarization. And depolarization is the key process that makes this whole system work. And so real quick, I'm going to take a dive back into our biology, anatomy, physiology days and we're gonna talk about muscle cells. And so to really give you the Cliff Notes version, the muscle cells operate off of what's called an action potential. And so if you remember, we have all of those ions, sodium, potassium, calcium, all of these which have a positive charge. And these ions have an ability to move in and out of the cell in order to change the charge of the cell. And so if you remember inside the cell, we have all the myosin and actin, and when it receives this action potential or this change in charge, it causes these muscle fibers to shrink down, reducing the size of the cell and what essentially creates that contraction. And so as these cells depolarize, essentially they contract. And so really we can think of depolarization as our contraction. Now the other bit of terminology that I want to talk about here is going to be our repolarization. And so after that action potential has happened, the ions have shifted and the cells have contracted, eventually those ions start working their way back in, the actin and myosin release causing the cell to move back out to its original size, and this is what we call our relaxation. And so like I said, these terms are going to be very important as we get to talking about what's happening within this conduction system. But just remember, depolarization means we have contraction happening, and repolarization means we have relaxation happening. And so it's also important to note that when this is happening in the ventricle, this contraction is what we call systole. And again, within the ventricle, when we have this relaxation going on, 
This is what we refer to as diastole. All right, so we've got that stuff out of the way. So let's go ahead and jump into really talking about the pathways and how this conduction system works. And so the first of these things that we're going to talk about is a special collection of cells that are located over here in the right atrium. And this collection of cells is what we refer to as the sinoatrial node, or oftentimes you'll, you'll just hear it called the SA node. And this SA node, you're going to hear it referred to as the pacemaker of the heart. And the reason for this is these specialized cells actually have the ability to depolarize on their own. And this depolarization causes an action potential that moves out away from them. And this is something that we refer to that's called automaticity. And so like I said, when that action potential happens, this is going to spread out to all the surrounding cells, causing all of those cells to depolarize as well. And in fact, most cells in the heart will only depolarize when a neighboring cell depolarizes. And so that's what makes these cells so special, is they have the ability to depolarize entirely by themselves. And to even make this cooler, this depolarization happens at a pretty consistent rate. And in fact, the cells in the SA node will depolarize all by themselves at a rate of about 60 to 100 times per minute. And this rate can change as a result of various influences. You can have influence from the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system, which we do cover quite thoroughly within our lessons on shock. Again, I'm going to link to up above. But also this rate can be influenced by some sort of problem or condition and ultimately change the rate in which these cells are depolarizing. And so as those cells depolarize, you get that wave of depolarization that flows throughout the rest of the atrium causing the cells of the atrium to contract and thus ejecting blood down into the ventricle. Now, one thing to note, though, is this spreading of depolarization between cells is not the fastest process. It works great spreading that signal from the proper direction slowly throughout those cells so that you have a nice coordinated contraction, but sometimes you need to get that signal to other places a little bit quicker. And an example of this is here we have the SA node is over in the right atrium, but we also need the left atrium to be firing at the same time. And so there's actually a special pathway that kind of goes from the SA node and comes into the left atrium over here and helps to spread this signal out. And the specialized cells that make up this pathway carry that signal very fast. And this pathway that we have here is what we call Bachman's bundle. Again, think of this as a highway for that signal to spread from the SA node in the right atrium over to the left atrium in order to begin that process of depolarization and thus contraction. So now moving from there, there's another area of specialized cells. And these cells are found down here in the atrial septal wall. And these cells are what we call the atrioventricular node, or you'll often hear it referred to as the AV node. And the AV node, oftentimes you're going to hear this referred to as the gatekeeper. And the reason for this is the AV node's job is to take that signal that originated in the SA node and pass that signal along throughout the rest of the conduction system. And the way that it gets this signal from the SA node is through the use of three pathways. And we call these the internodal pathways. Essentially, all these do is take that depolarization that's happened within the SA node and ensure that it gets to the AV node so that the AV node can continue to pass that along. Now, the cells that make up the AV node, they're actually pretty specialized cells too, and they have that same automaticity that the cells in the SA node have as well, although these ones fire at a slightly different rate. So in the off chance that they aren't receiving signal from the SA node, and they can fire with their own intrinsic rate of 40 to 60. But like we talked about, really the AV node's primary job is to be that gatekeeper of the signal from the SA node. And so there's one really important thing that this node does, is when it gets that signal from the SA node, is it's actually going to delay the conduction. And so it's going to receive that signal, and it's going to hold on to it for just a little bit 
before it passes it on to the rest of the system. And it usually delays this about 120 milliseconds, or 0.12 seconds. And this delay is absolutely vital in the functioning of this system. The reason for that is, by having this delay, it allows for the full contraction of the atria, as well as the closure of the tricuspid and the mitral valve, before sending that signal along to the ventricles to contract. And it's pretty amazing that this happens, because by having this little bit of delay, it prevents the atria and the ventricles from really working against each other, and it keeps that blood moving in the right direction, first from the atria to the ventricle, and then from the ventricle out to either the lungs or the rest of the body. And so really, without this delay, this flow of blood wouldn't work. And so after we've had this delay, the AV node is going to pass that depolarization down into something that we call the bundle of Hiss. And the bundle of Hiss is located within that ventricular septum. And you can think of the bundle of Hiss as this high-speed transport system that we had just talked about. It allows the conduction of those signals to happen very fast. And it will take this same signal of depolarization that started all the way up in the SA node, which has come through the intranodal pathways to the AV node, and will now carry those throughout the ventricles. And again, it does this very quickly. And the bundle branch is actually going to split into two separate pathways. We have our right bundle branch and our left bundle branch. And then from there, the left bundle branch is actually going to split some more and take this into our left posterior fascicle and our left anterior fascicle. So it's going to ensure that this signal gets to both the back or the posterior side as well as the front or the anterior side of that left ventricle. And so we have those bundle branches which come down and again they really provide that fast transport of that action potential. And then so finally from there we're going to have these extensions off of these bundle branches and fascicles, which we call the Purkinje fibers. And so the whole point of these Purkinje fibers is to take that signal to the correct area, or the correct part of the ventricle, in the correct order, and this is what allows for that organized contraction of the ventricle ejecting that blood either out into the pulmonary artery or the aorta. And so by sending the signal down that bundle of his into our left and right bundle branches and out through these Purkinje fibers, you get that very uniform, proper contraction, again, keeping that blood flowing in the right direction. And finally, once again, the cells that are within the bundle of his or the Purkinje fibers, they are also specialized cells. And if they're not receiving a signal from the AV node, they also have that same automaticity to be able to have their own intrinsic rate. And so here, if we're not receiving that rate from the AV node, we're going to have an intrinsic rate of 20 to 40. All right, so that there is the overview of the conduction system of the heart and how it works. As a quick review, we have that signal that originates, that depolarization that originates from the SA node is carried out through the atria, aided by Bachmann's bundle to get over from the right atrium to the left atrium, causing contraction in those atria, pumping blood into the ventricles. At the same time, that signal is moving across those intranodal pathways and reaching the AV node or the gatekeeper in which this delay is going to happen to that signal. And after that delay, that signal is going to go out into the bundle of his, into our left and right bundle branches, our left branching into the left posterior fascicle and the left anterior fascicle. And from there, it's going to carry out into those Purkinje fibers and get to all the parts of the ventricle very quickly in the right timing and right order to cause that organized contraction, ejecting that blood out the ventricle into either the, the pulmonary circuit to go to the lungs or into the aorta to go out to the rest of the body. It's really a pretty amazing system that we have here and the way it all comes together in order to just make everything work and keep that blood flow going in the right direction and moving throughout our body.
I hope this all made sense for you guys. I hope that you have a better understanding of what's happening in this electrical system. Because like I said, in order to really know what's happening when you're looking at your patient's rhythm strip, you have to know what's happening underlying to give you those electrical signals. And so with that said, I do want to thank you guys for watching. I really hope that this lesson was informative to you guys. If you liked this video and you found it useful, please make sure and hit that like button down below as it really helps to spread the word about our channel and we're so appreciative of it. We also love to hear your comments and feedback or any questions you have in regards to this video, so feel free to leave those down below as well. Now coming up in the next lesson in part two of this series, we're going to dive into the actual rhythm interpretation and how you break down that electrical signal that you see on your patient's rhythm strip. So make sure and stay tuned for that next episode. In the meantime, feel free to check out another one of our great series of lessons on arterial blood gases. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next lesson.